Welcome to section 5.2, where today we're going to be taking a look at congruent polygons. Now, here's your, your brief overview here. Basically, two figures are congruent when they have exactly the same sides and angles. Okay, <clears throat> That's really what you're looking for. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, in the past, we had dealt with like congruent angles, and we had markings to show that they were congruent. Right? For instance, if I used a single arc and a single arc, and specifically, that told me that the angle measures were the same, right? The same was true with side lengths, okay? Uh, if I have a segment here and I have a segment over here, I was able to mark them as congruent using those little notches. And that meant that they had the same length, right? <clears throat> so if they have the same side lengths and they have the same angle measures, then the two figures, perhaps even polygons, can be congruent, okay? Or are congruent. So when two figures are congruent, the sides and angles are also congruent, but specifically what we call corresponding. Corresponding sides and angles are also congruent. <clears throat> so the key up above was that the side lengths were the same and the angle measures were the same, right? And this just adds that they have to match in the same way, okay? <laughs> So if I've got corresponding sides, for instance, we've got A, B, C, and P, Q, R down below, we want to just go ahead and list what those are by matching their positions, okay? So if I see uh, segment A, B here, and it's got a single notch, and I see P, Q there, and it has a single notch, that's not necessarily enough to say that they're corresponding, okay? Let's check what they're between also, okay? You'll notice that uh, segment AB is between B, which has a single arc, and A, which has a double arc. The same is true of PQ. PQ is between Q, which has a single arc, and P, which has a double arc. So now I can say they're corresponding sides, okay? AB and PQ, okay? And we're going to double check the others as well, okay? So BC here has a double notch. QR also has a double notch. And each one is between a single arc and a triple arc. So that means that, yes, they're corresponding, B, C, and Q, R. The last one to check, A, C has three notches. P, R has three notches, so they're congruent, but are they corresponding? It's between a double arc and a triple. This is between a double arc and a triple. So yes, A, C, and P, R, okay? Don't know why I put two. <laughs> P, R, there we go. So, so far, all of our sides have corresponded, okay? Now, we could check angles in the same way, okay? I will say if you do one, you don't necessarily have to do the other. They're bound to match up, especially with, uh, like, triangles. You're, you're, you're not going to have an issue. Um, <clears throat> but it wouldn't be a bad idea this first time just to double check that. So let's look at our single arc here, B, and here, Q. Those are each between a single notch and a double notch, right? So angle B and angle Q would be said to be corresponding, okay? Let's check our double. Double arc at A and at P between a single and a triple, a single and a triple. So once again, A and P are corresponding. Finally, angle C and angle R, they each have three arcs between a double and a triple notch, double and a triple notch. So once again, they are corresponding, okay? Now, what does that mean? If all sides correspond and all angles are corresponding and they're congruent, then automatically we can say that the polygons are congruent, okay? So therefore, that's what this symbol means, therefore, the polygons are congruent. Those triangles would be said to be congruent, okay? Now likewise, the converse is true, okay? corresponding parts of congruent triangles. If I already told you congruent triangles existed and they had matching parts then, they would also be congruent, okay? This is what's known as CPCTC. It's just a much faster way of, of uh, stating that, okay? So let's write this out. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? CPCTC. <clears throat> C 
So we're going to use that more and more moving forward. But again, it's, it's one of those really important theorems that we all kind of understand. Okay. So the third angles theorem says that if two blank of one triangle are congruent to two blank of another triangle, then the blank angles of the triangles are congruent also. Well, that would be two angles, such as angle B and angle E, are congruent. <coughs> I'm sorry. We're matching two from one triangle to two of the other. So really, I should say angle B and angle A are congruent to angle E and angle D, respectively, Okay, to two angles of another triangle, then the blank angles, well, the third angles, the last one, would be congruent also. Let's think about why that is. If I told you B is 50 degrees, we now know that E is 50 degrees by the marking. All right? If I told you that A is 100 degrees, then D would have to be 100 degrees. And together, that's 150 and 150. You've only got 30 degrees left by our triangle sum theorem here and here. So again, hopefully it makes sense how more or less by the process of elimination, you've used up the same number of degrees out of your 180, and therefore their last angle would have to match also. So in this one, we would say, therefore, comma, angle C is congruent to angle F, because we already had two that were congruent. Pretty basic if you think about it. All right, now let's get some practice with uh, corresponding pieces, OK? Number one says to name all corresponding sides and angles. And this is a prime example of CPCTC. They're telling us triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And therefore, corresponding parts are congruent Okay, within those two congruent triangles. Corresponding parts are congruent. There is a matching game more or less being played here. Okay, You just have to understand how to read it. Now, this is, this is known as a congruence statement. But they're really helpful if you start to just number the vertices, Okay, those points of intersections of your sides where the angles are located. Angle A, angle B, angle C, angle D, angle E, angle F. Okay, So if I want my corresponding sides and angles, this is telling me the order that that's going to happen. For instance, first of all, we see that they don't share any vertices. So I can actually name the angles using just a single letter. I would say that angle A corresponds to angle D. Right? Same position. They're the first letter. Angle B corresponds to angle E. Same position. Angle C corresponds to angle F. Same position. Now, that's not all. As we know, triangles have three angles, but they also have three sides. Okay, So the three sides would be segment AB, and that would correspond to DE, 1, 2, 1, 2. Right? Next up, BC would correspond to EF. Hopefully you're seeing why I said this is like a matching game. It's, it's pretty simple once you break it down. And then finally, C back to A and F back to D. Those are your corresponding angles and corresponding sides, three of each. Okay? Let's take a look at number two then. So number two says we've got triangle IJH, we've got triangle LJK. This makes it a little bit tricky because they actually share a vertex, even though the angles are clearly not the same. Right? So let's go ahead and break this down by their corresponding parts. Okay? Corresponding parts. First of all, congruent, uh, you, know, you know what, let's call them corresponding. I need to be careful there. Corresponding uh, side lengths. Let's start with those. So in this left triangle, we've got HJ that has a single notch. And of course, in the right triangle, we've got JK, right? Really, I'm going to call it KJ, though, just so that I'm matching those in the same way. These angles match up. Those angles would be vertical, so they would match up. So I'm going to say HJ and KJ are corresponding sides. Next up, let's look for two notches. I want to see that here. I saw that over there. That's IH and LK. What makes this one tricky is they both share the same markings on either end. So we don't actually know just by looking which way the, the letters should match up. Okay. So what you can do from there, since I was adjacent to the triple, L was adjacent to my triple. That's how I knew to match I and L. Since H was adjacent to my single, K was adjacent to my single. That's how I matched H and K. Okay, And the last one, my triple notches would be I, J, and L, J. So we got our corresponding sides taken care of. Let's now match our corresponding angles. Okay, So <clears throat> 
like I said earlier, it gets a little bit tricky because some of these are allowed to be congruent to more than one in the other triangle. So if I'm going to say angle H, that's between my single and double notch. Well, between my single and double notch here would be K. So angle K would match it, right? They're corresponding. Angle I is between a double and a triple, which is going to match angle L. Angle I, angle L. And finally, this one, I can't call it angle J and angle J because there's actually lots of angles at J. So let's be careful. We'll call it I, J, H, angle I, J, H. Remember, sometimes we got to name them with three vertices. And finally, angle L, J, K. That goes back to those naming rules earlier on. But again, three corresponding sides, three corresponding angles, okay? So down below, in your own words, I want you to just explain to me why are these triangles congruent? Look carefully at the markings. And then I want you to try to write your own congruence statement, kind of like this. Make sure to match your pieces very carefully, okay? All right, so go ahead and pause the video, see how that goes. Okay, so coming back here, explain why the triangles are congruent. <clears throat> you may have noticed a single single, a double double, and a triple triple. So all of the sides were congruent to a side in the other triangle. Likewise, we see the same is true of my angles, a single arc, a double arc, and a triple arc. So all sides, angles are congruent in corresponding positions. Okay? And you can double check me on that, but like I said, it's as simple as looking at the double, uh, the, the single notch is between a, a single arc and a double arc. Same thing down here, right? Single arc and double arc. So just go ahead and check your positions, but you will find that that's true. Now, <clears throat> this is where there are lots of different options. It says write a congruence statement for the two triangles. There are actually going to be six correct ways to do this, okay? I'm going to show you all six of them this first time. Um, I'll write it out very ni uh, nice and neat the first time. And the other five, I'll just go ahead and show you how else they could match, okay? So this is the way that we would write this. We would say that triangle, we could say R, S, T. That's me crossing across the single notch and the double notch. So R, S, T is congruent to, to triangle crossing across the single notch and the double notch, D, E, F. Triangle D, E, F. Now, this is what I'm expecting to see, but like I said, there are lots of ways you could have done this. For instance, I could have said TSR and FED. Those are still matching in the right order. I could have, instead of um, RST, I could have gone RTS. And again, every time you should have the triangle symbols and the congruence symbol. So RTS... I could have gone DFE. I could have gone TRS, FDE. And finally, I could have done SRT, EDF, or STR, EFD. So, like I said, there are a total of six of these, okay? I guess I'm not going to write them all out. <laughs> it gets pretty tedious after a while, but you have to make sure that you understand how to match them in a way that is true. Any one of those six will work out for you. But while there are six, correct ways to do this, there are far more incorrect ways to do this. So just be really cautious there, okay? All right, and we're going to wrap it up with a few practice problems here, okay? Up at the top, it says in the diagram, NPLM is congruent to EFGH. Now, this is telling you the exact order that they match, so be really cautious here, okay? And we're asked to find the values of X and Y. So let's go ahead and look, at, look for those. I see X here on segment GH, okay? Let's see what that's congruent to using our congruence statement. GH are the last two letters. That's congruent to LM, the last two letters. So don't just eyeball this. Make sure you're checking your congruence statement. So therefore, I could say 2X minus 3 meters is equal to 8 meters. 2X minus 3 equals 8. Add the 3. 2X equals 11. And don't freak out if you get a decimal. There's nothing wrong with decimal values. We divide by 2 to get x equals 5.5, okay? Let's go ahead and solve for y now. So where is y? Well, y is this angle here at point E, right? And we know that E, the first letter, will match in the first letter. So 
that is congruent to 72 degrees. So I say 72 is equal to 7y plus 9. We subtract the 9 over to get 63 equals 7y, and divide by 7 to get 9 equals y. Okay? So hopefully the process is making sense. As long as you're following along your congruence statement, you're going to be fine. Okay? Next up, find the value of x. Identify the theorem postulate corollary you are using to find x, okay? So you go ahead and try this one on your own. I would recommend you reference the front page. Pause the video, see how it goes. All right, so on the front page, I hope you guys came across the third angles theorem, right? It basically says that if two angles of two triangles are congruent, single notch, I'm sorry, single arc, double arc, then the third angle is congruent also. So I could set 2x plus 30 equal to whatever this is. And we can calculate that. Because if that's 55 and this is 65, they add up to 120. 180 minus 120 leaves me with 60 degrees. So 2x plus 30 equals 60, my third angle, right? Subtract the 30 to get 2x equals 30, and divide to get x equals 15, OK? So we solve for x. Identify the theorem postulate corollary. We would say the third angles theorem. All right. Finally, identify any figures that can be proven congruent. If so, write a congruent statement. So let's carefully look these over. We've got a single notch, single notch, a double, a double, and they share this one. I can actually use the reflexive property to say BD is congruent to itself and put a triple notch on it, okay? Likewise, I see a single arc, a single arc, between my 1 and 3. I see a double arc, a double arc, between my 2 and 3. Okay, that's where they meet. And finally, I see a triple arc, triple arc, between my 1 and 2. So yeah, everything matches and everything corresponds. So let's write a congruent statement now. Um, a lot of times, I will try to, try to begin uh, using either simply using the angles or the sides to compare the two, okay? So if I look at triangle ABD here, I think I'll probably start at B because it has a single arc. I'll go to D because it has a double arc. And finally, I'll do A because it has a triple. So that's BDA. Triangle BDA is then congruent to triangle. Single would be D. Double is B. Triple is C. So that's going to be D, B, C. That's just one example of your six correct congruent statements, OK? Let's try the next one on your own, pause the video, see how it goes. All right, and once again, a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, 3-3. Two, three, three. Things looking good so far, right? Let's double check positioning now. One is between a single and double arc. One is between a single and a double arc. Two is between a double arc and an unknown. Two is between a double arc and an unknown. but I can put a triple arc here and here by vertical angles. Those would have to be congruent. So now it's between a 2 and a 3. And my triple notch is between a 1 and a 3. So yes, everything matches up. And we're going to write our congruent statement. Triangle, F, G, H, single, double, triple, is congruent to triangle, single, double, triple. That would be J, K, H. Make sure you're using your symbols, triangles and congruence. All right. That'll sum it up for us. Okay, if you guys have any questions, please email or shoot me a message. Good luck on your assignment found on Big Ideas. I'll see ya.